welcome to Ask the Accountant. And this one is the Pit Stop Podcast at Accountants North 2023. Now, with me today, we have a guest that I've been excited to have a chat with you when you booked in. So I think we're going to have a good one here. But first of all, who are you? Why should people care? And what do you do? So my name's Marcus. I'm a senior success manager at Swoop. Uh, and we're a, a funding and savings platform to help accountants help their clients access the market of funding and savings opportunities. Love it. And both me and Johan have been using the product before. We know how, how important it is. Um, it's definitely something that we feel passionate about as well. I think yeah. one of the things that you guys don't give yourself enough credit for is it's not just providing a platform, but actually explaining like how this all works, like yeah. funding's available 100%. and not enough doing that at the moment. So yeah, yeah, kudos, kudos. Right. First of all, we are at Accountex North 2023. We are. My question to you is why Accountex North 2023? What, what's so special about this event? I think a lot of some of the events are, can be quite niche and obviously they're, you've got the DAS being quite digital and they come to those sort of spaces. Accountex for me is a bit of a central part of that. It's a diverse place where everyone, no matter what size of firm you are, can definitely get an opportunity to see what apps are out in the market, what opportunities they're missing in terms of off offering value to their clients. Um, and the talks here and bits as well are absolutely amazing. So yeah, yeah. the attendees are what makes it Accountex. Yeah, definitely. And I feel like Accountex as well has just got that, because with North, we don't have those huge stands like completely dominating. Exactly. That. Everyone's got that level playing field. I think that's quite special, yeah, it isn't does. it? Yeah, 100%. It's, um, yeah, Accountant is definitely one of my favorite ones. It's, I'm thinking for more for the talks, I think it's probably yeah. my most important, my most favorite part. Whether it's Rachel Harris or the diversity and inclusion, it touched on areas I don't think it's talked about enough. Yeah, I mean, there's one, one about parenthood uh, exactly at the end of the day. I mean, that's... And it's good. It's the same, same way accountants offer it. You don't just, you're not just an advisor just for the financial side. You're an advisor on their business. And I think that's what accountants are trying to achieve. Be the kind of one, one place for every accountant to go to help them in their, in their lives. Because with hybrid working and remote working, that's kind of the same thing as your business now. And I think helping every aspect of that to make you a, bit, a better person and a better business person. Yeah. It's, yeah, that's yeah. what it facilitates. Love it, love it. All right, so... We've been here for half the way now. Yep. So for the rest of the day, what are you most looking forward to out of Accountex? Is there is it the after party? Or is it have you got a, a talk you're looking to get involved in? What's what what are you looking forward to for the rest of the day? Um I think for me there's been a couple of talks already. So Rachel Harris's personal brand was absolutely fantastic. I, yeah, I've heard that um, before, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and all of her content's absolutely great. Yeah. Has, she, has she been on the podcast before? She's not yet, she's waiting for series two. We, she's one of the most um, ask for guests we've ever had. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the content creation clinic over there is just absolutely, uh, yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, and her team are great as well, to be fair. From where. But no, the talks are one, these are the ones that I come here for, have only been done so far. But for me, it's just meeting new firms. Mm. I think one thing we don't do, we've got Sam and Sam Horner and Sam TG that are our kings of the north, if you like, uh, yes. for, for Swoop. Um, but for me to actually see firms we work with in person, is, I think is the most important part. I think we've had a number that can't stand already that. You see them on screen, but see them in real life, kind of their height, so the fact they're 3D, yeah. uh, you know, it's, yeah. um, that's for me. It's, it's, it's to see in our current clients, but also meeting to new fans as well. Love it, love it. So that's your highlight, uh, or that's what you're looking forward to. What's yeah. been your highlight so far? What, what's, what, I mean, what were you halfway through the day? What stands out for you as something that, you are, that you're going to remember from this event? I'll be, I'll be honest, it's probably the podcast part of it, the fact that you guys are doing something that not a lot of events do. It's having that kind of live feed of the day, getting a bit of insight from everyone. Um, and I think that one thing I really like about this is the fact that, it's, as I mentioned before, it's not just, oh, here's some vendors that you might want to speak to. It's actually trying to solve the problems that everyone faces, not just accountants. Yeah. Whether it is through the talks or whether it is through the opportunities for the vendors we've got here. It's, um, yeah, I uh, yeah, love the whole thing, really. Yeah, and that's what this is event's about, right? Yeah, exactly. Like We've all got these problems, we've all got these issues. Sometimes vendors and um, accountants themselves, they don't talk about it enough, but actually going to this event, one of the nicest things that can ever happen is go, oh, you know what, I've got the same problem and I'm not alone. It, it, just yeah, that. Yeah, it just says there's a bit of empathy. And I think people exactly. really realize that they're, everyone is human. If you, even if you work at a software company, you still have kids, you still have the same problems yeah, everyone yeah. else has. I think sometimes you could be a, be a little bit too sterile with your approach to people. And I think just understanding everyone's the same in terms of their problems is, is important. Yeah. So we've talked a lot about how there's a lot of actionable things from these sort of events, right? Yeah. There's definitely a reason why these events are useful and going for What is your top tip though for, and, and it doesn't have to be for this event, for any event you've ever done. What's your top tip for making sure that you walk away with this and you make it actionable? What, how would you walk away from an event like this and go, you know what, I need to, I need to consider X, Y, Z. Yeah. How do you make sure you keep yourself accountable for that? The pre-work definitely helps. I think understanding what problems you're trying to solve 
one of the things I think is always going to be a challenge is the fact they bundle apps under certain banners. So like forecasting, yeah. Yeah. HR. Yeah. And we know that all the forecasting apps are, are fantastic, but in their own right. You know, Spotlight, solve different problems to fathom, futurally solve different problems to float. It's understanding what problem you're trying to solve and what your clients actually need. And your client needs more than anything. It, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's the biggest thing, I think. It's make sure you come here with intention. Um, and when you do come away with it, you've got a bags of swag, you've got emails coming into your inbox, dedicate a little bit of time to really sit back and understand, okay, I've spoken to all these firms, which ones are my short-term sort of must-haves and which ones are the long-term nice-to-haves and then, you know, attack it a bit more strategic that way. I love it. I love it. And you mentioned swag. What's your favourite swag of the event so far? I imagine everyone's pretty silly, but it's got to be those top trumps, man. No, they're... no, 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 not everyone, but no, we'll take it. They're, but... they're absolutely fantastic. Yeah, yeah. The top trumps absolutely fantastic. Um, there's been a number of people here that I think that now become a new fame being on the top drum. <laughs> yeah. um, Sam Horner, it's, I think he's going constantly on show with me and everyone. So it's great. It's, top drums are really good. Yes, yeah, I mean, it's gone down a little bit. I think people are now realizing that not everyone's a stress ball That's it. and a notepad. And, and I think what we love about Accountex is they've really pushed the fact that it's got to be eco-friendly, right? Yeah, exactly that. We don't want e-waste. It's made that different material now. Exactly. It's making sure yeah, that they exactly. say the cardboard stands are easy to be disposed of. Because, let's like say, we, we've got to come back next year and there's a lot of focus now on things like ESG and sustainability, like Catherine Freeman and stuff that are doing a lot of work in that space. So, yeah, I think it's important to be, make sure we are aware of um, what we're here for and not, you know, mess it up on the route. So. Love it. Love it. Um, so, what do you love most about this industry then in the accounting side? Actually, so I left it for a year and a half. So, I yeah. used, to, used to work at a company called Capitalize, left that for, for some time to work in a, more with lenders, so less in the accountancy space, okay. but then come back okay. in. Me personally, I like the, you can see the impact that you have on the end user, which is therefore going to be the small business. Yeah, I, I'm passionate about it. I'm uh, probably a bit too nerdy about it to the fact that I like driving past businesses and pointing out, oh, those guys, I help them with a loan or help them with this or yeah, 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 something yeah. like that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and again, you can see the impact that you have on businesses. So big corporates and big lenders are great to work with. I've worked with those at NatWest. I worked with them at Lenscape before here, but seeing an impact of get someone getting a grant or saving a bit of money in the utility bills for me is the, is the rewarding part. Yeah. And, and I think that's the whole point of accounting, right? Like I say this so many times, most accountants aren't here because we love filing tax returns. Yeah, of course. Love it because we feel like we can make an impact, can make a change. And, yeah. and it's thanks to you vendors that we get to do that. And you're now, you only got the best of both worlds, right? You're going to help the accountants help the client, but also help the clients as well. So yeah, I mean, it you, you must be rewarding. In, oh, without a doubt. You guys are incredibly technically and you know business advice able, and we're here to help that scale and and reduce your time spent on the boring stuff so you can go out and have, build those relationships and bring in clients and make the impact that you that you do, but on mass. Love it, love it, love it. Um, okay, so that's what you love about the industry. What would you like to change about the industry? Hmm, interesting. Well, I think more, more education that isn't wrapped up in a sales pitch. I think there's a lot of people out there that, that hide they're like secret sauce, if you like, behind yeah, what yeah, they yeah. do. Yeah. Whether it is funding, whether it is forecasting, I think the more you educate people and position yourself as a uh, as overused term, but trusted advisor, if you like, is that I think that na naturally magnetizes you into those yeah. people. We see that a lot, and I mentioned her a lot, but Rachel Harris, Kaylee at Teleroo, there's a number of people in the industry that just give out a lot of content without necessarily anything asking for anything back. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Um, and they've done incredibly well with that. And I think there's a lot of people out there that have a lot in the tank, you know, there's tons of people. Phil Hobden, uh, uh, there's loads of people in the space that have so much knowledge that they give out. I don't think people are doing that enough. No, no. And and I know a lot of it is down to time and, and, and it is. I get that, but you're right. Like the amount of impact that and we keep talking about the word impact, but the amount of impact it can do is, is important. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like we're starting to drop those barriers. Originally it was like, well, why would I want to give away this bit of knowledge? Or why would I want to talk about this to my, you know, competitors that are walking around? But actually... That's how we evolve and grow, isn't it? Exactly. That. And that's just why, that's why I like this podcast, because you get a bit of insight into the person and why they do what they do, which is an important part. Same thing with Sam Horner did, say, a golf video with Dan from That's Dats. amazing, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. I've watched that so many times. Um, but it's showing the people that why they do what they do and just sharing things that they probably take for granted and they don't realise and not everyone else knows that stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just, it's just sharing and facilitating stuff for the better. I love it. I love it. So, what's your ideal client? We'd like to say everyone, you know, okay. but but in reality, where we have the most impact and I would think where the people have the best mindset for what we do to be able again, we solve the problem of access to funding, loans, grants, and equity is those very sole practitioner of five members of staff, multi-partner and multi-office firms. And that is quite broad. 
but it's really having the time and capacity to have the conversations with the client. Yeah. Yeah. Be able to dedicate time because there'll be a period when you aren't betting any proof process or a bit of a period of is this really working? A bit of a you know latent potential, if you like, where you need to build the building into your process and then you see the upside. So you need to be able to allow that time to, to take place. Um, and also the types of clients you're serving as well. You know, if, if you do work with incredibly small businesses that perhaps are quite self-sufficient or maybe a hobby business, yeah, yeah. yeah. maybe the impact we have is, isn't as great. So we need to make sure we have you know the biggest impact possible. So they're probably our target. I love it. So for where you've got, you, you've had like, um, you've already said you've got kind of a, a, a career where you've spanned multiple sectors now and multiple jobs. Sure. Out of all that time, like what's that one piece of tech stack that you can't live without? Is it, you know, social media? Is, is there a social media platform? Is it a um, communication tool? Is it something on your, an app on your phone? Is there anything that you keep going back to that you would promote above all else? Maybe it's a lot. I, I quite like LinkedIn. I think it's okay, a, okay. More, for, more because it gives you a bit of an insight into the person rather than the business. Mm -hmm. I don't follow a lot of company pages on there. Um, one, they don't get a lot of reach, and I think that's pretty evident of the fact I don't follow a lot of them yeah. and others pretty don't. Uh, and it's now becoming a little bit, bit of a place where other social platforms probably become a little bit complacent. It's it's really good curated content that's on LinkedIn. A um, bit of an underloved platform, I think, in my opinion, underused by a lot of, lot of people. Bit Still kind of seen as a CV platform, isn't kind it? Of is, some? Yeah, and, and I suppose it is in a way, but it's not just a list of things that you've done in the past. It's also how you project yourself, the content that you share, what you engage with, and you can understand the vendors or your customers a lot better than just looking them up on, on Google. Yeah. So yeah, I think it's great. I love it. I love it. What's your whole view on AI? I know it's a bit of a buzzword at the moment, or is it? That's the question really to be asked. Yeah. Is it just pure marketing that a lot of these vendors are playing around at, or are you excited by it all? Definitely excited about it. I think anything that's going to help businesses add efficiencies and more value into what they do is, is yeah. going to be great. It is a bit of a marketing play sometimes. I think AI, you know, it's such a broad term. And then you get things like machine learning, a little like subsets of that. I think people need to probably be a little bit careful with that because it could be it could be a little bit of a reputational risk to play that AI game. In reality, it's just, you know, you're building upon old data sets and that's been about for a long time. Um, I, I use ChatGPT, but probably not to the extent it needs to be used. Yeah, I use it more to get eradicate things like blank page fear when you're kind of writing a blog or something like that to get some sort of framework down before you add in that some actual value. Um, but people, I think what we're seeing, and you might see it on LinkedIn as well, like the some of the posts are very the same. Yes. Like yeah, it's yeah. the little hook at the top, three bullet points, and then a summary at the end. And that is probably driven by ChatGPT, given a very framework. And whilst it does give you a lot of breadth and scalability in what you do, it does make everyone the same a little bit. Yeah, yeah, Particularly yeah, at this quite early stage. That. Um, and that gets boring. So yeah, as long as it's really used in the right purpose, as long as it's solving a problem like anything, then it's, yeah, it's definitely useful. Yeah. I think for us, like, we're using it a lot in our practice and we're trying to, trying to push that as, to its boundaries. It so we're using it mainly in the marketing side. Like um, oh, okay. if we do a podcast, then we want to be able to create that into short form content quickly. So AI is perfect for that. Yep, yep. But we're really starting to see how else can we use it? You know, is there any way that we could be a bit more generic or less generic, shall I say, when you're talking to clients and stuff? Can we use AI to kind of bring that? We're into a lot of automation. So how can we figure out if automation can be less the chatbot stuff could be quite interesting exactly that, yeah, yeah. I think that makes sense. even just for a, like a, a support function as opposed to a an account management or like success function yeah. that kind of light touch faq without having to trawl through a list of faqs you punch in things at keywords and then it's yeah, exactly i, th I think yeah. that makes sense it's a, yeah. it's a better customer journey so exactly exactly and, and we're all up for that so yeah again we're at the start of ai i, I think what the future holds is exciting. People get very excited very quickly though. I think that's the only thing. Same thing with like blockchain and crypto. Uh, and yeah, yeah. These things are can be a little bit of flashes in the pan. And I think long term they all, all have their place. But does it have as broad of a use case at the moment as people think it does? Probably not. But yeah. yeah. I think we're limited at the moment as well. A lot of accountants have different ecosystems and that will never help AI, right? Yeah. Unless you're on one ecosystem, then it's going to be difficult, isn't it? But yeah. we'll, we'll see how it goes. All right, this this question is from uh, producer Lizzie. Nice. How did you find the podcast? Uh, as in actually find it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Um, so I follow both yourself and, and Johan. Uh, and yeah, I mean, 
it prompts me every Monday morning with the po- when the podcast comes. It helps out, that, doesn't it? I dial it in. Just, just. Uh, I, th- I think for me, in a weird way, it kind of gets me set for the week in terms of. So there's a book Grace Beverly wrote about getting yourself in the flow for the for the what work you do, and because you're talking to things that are quite topical when it's on on with the firms that I speak about, I share a lot of content you guys talk about. It gets me in the front of my mind for for work. So yeah, it's part of my weekly prep. I'll be honest. So yeah, I love it. Love it. Yeah. Cool. And then the final one is, what would you like to plug? So we've got this camera, this camera, this camera. I'd go for that camera if I was doing. Yep. But ultimately, like, just plug away. Like, why should people come to Swoop, like, at the next event? Why should they talk to you about it? And how do they get in contact with you in the first place? Yeah, sure. So so why Swoop? So as, as I mentioned before, we're a, we're a funding grants and loans platform. We've got a team of over 30 specialists in those fields. Um, and why why should you use it? There's a lot of opportunity to add value to clients so I don't think it's taken, whether it's at the point of onboarding when you do a credit check, you know, quarterly back returns, year-end accounts, where you can add a lot more value when it comes to educating your clients on the access and opportunity they have. So, I mean, have a chat with us. I mean, there's, it, whilst I do have a set, we have a set criteria of clients we like to work with, we work with a number of FDs, bookkeepers, um, and we want to make sure that you add the most value to your clients. Uh, so that's our, that's our tagline. I love it. And best place to contact you? Is it LinkedIn? Uh, LinkedIn. And you're at most events, right? Like the the most events. Yeah, most, yeah, most, if not all. Awesome. Awesome. Well, again, we use it. So I know Yard's not sat here at the moment, but me and Yard both use the platform. Absolutely love it. I think we need more like you to be kind of pushing that. Make it like even I'm learning every day about other opportunities out there for clients and it's a minefield out there. And we need people like yourself to be able to do that. So keep fighting the fight for us. And um, yeah, we definitely recommend our end. So thank you uh, marcus it's been an absolute pleasure we're definitely gonna have to get you on for we have cool friends yeah only if anything to get yourself on the top trump uh thing going forward exactly Battle that, yeah. set, maybe get a better score than sam you know that's what i mean that's, it's a hard one, but that's what's all about yeah, that's, that's all I'm about so thank you very much everybody thank, thank you, you for tuning in thank you for um coming in, coming to um uh, to see this content we've got lots more content coming up for you and i'm sure we'll see you soon and definitely get yourself over at marcus on his linkedin page